Okay, and uh, the last talk of the afternoon and of today is uh, a joint work uh, with Bohan Yang, Vladimir Rochic, Milos Grucic, Me uh, Nele Mentens, and uh, Ingrid Ferbaver. And uh, Bohan will be giving the talk. So. Thank you. Thank you for the introduction, and thank you for staying here for the last talk of the day. And uh, with this talk, I would like to introduce our new TRNG, which is called ESTRNG, a high throughput, low area, true run member generators based on the edge sampling. And as you can see that we have a free running run authority here, and we are using a magnify to check the edge. So that's kind of a principle of our edge sampling TRNG. I'm sure some of you must see this architecture many, many times. This is a generic architecture of a TRNG. It consists of the entropy source, the digitization, the post-processing, and some online test. And uh, only the entropy source itself can produce true randomness, and for other components, they are pure deterministic. And uh, for this talk, we will focus on the digital noise source, and for other components of the architecture, will be the future work of the ESTRNG. So ESTRNG is a timing jitter-based TRNG. It has a compact implementation. It achieves a relative reasonable high throughput. And uh, the security analysis of the ESTRNG is supported by a stochastic model. <coughs> Why? Why it is important to have a stochastic model-based security analysis? Because for a lot of cryptographic applications, like uh, generating the keys, generating the initialization vectors, generating the mask, and thanks to uh, the last speaker of the previous session, and I hope our TRNG will uh, satisfy your requirement of your random numbers, and you don't need to recycle any random numbers in the cost of a compromised security. And uh, the security of a TRNG depends on its unpredictability. And what's the meaning of unpredictability? It means that with all your effort, an attacker cannot get the output of a TRNG. And this unpredictability cannot be measured using a statistical test that's from NIST 822, like the Dura test, like the FIPS test. But the entropy, the unpredictability, can be estimated by using stochastic model, which is required by the AS31 standard, and maybe it's required by the NIST 890B standard, and maybe in the future, most standards will require that. So ESTRNG is a timing jitter based TRNG. And for a free running run oscillator, if it's noise free, which means there's no noise, and if we know the current phase of the run oscillator, and all the future phase are deterministic, we know it completely. There's no unpredictability at all. But in the real world, there's always noise. And because of this noise, the face of a free running run oscillator becomes unpredictable. And a random bit is only generated when we're trying to determine the face of the run oscillator. For example, this is the simplest uh, timing jitter based TRNG, which is called elementary TRNG. We use a different flop to sample the signals in the free running run oscillator. And if the rising edge of the sampling signal is after the, the closest rising edge of the signal in the free running oscillator, the result will be encoded as zero. And if it's before, it will be encoded as one. So for the best case scenario, the rising edge of the sampling signal will be aligned with the rising edge of the signal in the free running oscillator and we will have the same probability to have zero and ones. But when we're designing a TRNG, we cannot realize on the best case scenario. We have to realize on the worst case scenario. And we know that there's another problem. The timing jitter, the Gaussian jitter, the white noise, the, the noise we want, accumulate very slowly in free running rounds later, which results in a very low throughput for timing jitter based TRNG. There are many techniques to improve the throughput. One technique is just implement a lot of free running run oscillators and put them together. It is a multiple run oscillator based TRNG. There's also a technique called concurrent sampling, which uses special sampling techniques to 
to, in, to increase the throughput. But our solution is to increase the sampling resolution. Now let's think, how can we increase the sampling resolution? Uh, the most straightforward way is to increase the sampling frequency. But the maximum, the highest sampling frequency is limited by the technology, by the platform, by the system, by the power, by the energy. It can be limited by anything. Is there anything else we can do? For example, we have a TRNG implemented on FPJ, and if we directly sample the signals on the FPJ, maybe the maximum sampling frequency we can achieve is around 300 megahertz and 400 megahertz. Can we do something even better? Yes, we can. We proposed the DCTRNG at DAC 2015, and uh, DCTRNG utilizes a time to digital converter to sample the signals in the free running oscillator. And uh, the signals of the free running oscillator propagate through the type delay chain, and it is a representative of the signals on the type delay chain. So when we take the sample, we will have some consecutive ones and zeros, the edge representing the edge of the signal. And uh, in the DCTRNG, we implement it on a Xilinx Spartan 6 platform. And the minimal steps of the delay elements on Spartan 6 is around 17 picosecond in average, which is corresponding to sample the free running oscillator at a frequency of around 60 gigahertz, which cannot be achieved by just sampling the free running oscillator. And according to the principle of the DCTRNG, the type delay chain needs to be long enough to capture at least half period of the signal of the free running oscillator. Now, here comes the problem. The fastest free running oscillator on the Spartan 6 we can implement is uh, with one lookup table, and the average period is around 2.2 nanoseconds. Let's do the simple math here. 2,200 picoseconds divided by 2, because we only need half period of it, divided by 17 picoseconds, because that's the average delay for each delay element, divided by 4, because uh, for each slice of Xilinx FPJ, it consists of a primitive called carry 4, which consists of 4 delay elements. And the result is 17, which means that we have to cascade 17 slices together to form the delay chain. And because of the variance of the temperature, wattage, we want to provide some safety margins. So maybe a reasonable number will be 20 here. 20 slices is not a lot on FPJ, but it's also not small. Especially if we have to cascade them together in a row. Maybe it will among several different clock regions. Can we do something different and better? We can. That's the ESTRNG we proposed today. So instead of using a long type delay chain, we only use one type delay chain. And uh, of course, now we cannot sample the whole half period of the signal there, which means that the stochastic model and the security analysis of the ESTRNG has been changed completely. And now let's have a closer look at the ESTRNG architecture. So the real oscillator one is the noise source, and uh, the signals propagate through the type delay chain, and uh, the sample of the type delay chain is triggered by the, another free running oscillator, and the sample result is encoded using a bit extractor. And uh, as you can see, that this is a truth table to show how we handled the sample data. And as you can see that, if the sampled data is all ones and all zeros, we are not going to encode the output. We are not going to generate the random, random bit. And that's a technique we use called variable precision phase encoding. So we can have a detailed explanation here. So the signals here propagate through the type delay chain. And if we take the sample now, the sample result will be 111. And according to the truth table, no output. 
But if the, if the following edge appears at the first stage of the delay chain, the sampled result will be 110, which will be encoded as 1. And the same thing for if the following edge is at the second stage. And similar stories holds for all the sample result is all zeros, all for the rising edge. So now let's have a generic look at what's the variable precision phase encoding. The principle here is that we only encode the phase which is close to the edge of the signal. And for the rest of the signal, we just discard them. And this is the intuitive pictures. So as you can see here, the high precision region, which is encoded as 1 and 0, is relatively the same base as the low precision region. But in the real case, the high precision region will be very narrow, very small, much smaller than the, the region for the low precision region. So that's why we need the second technique we propose in the paper to increase the throughput. But before that, it is very interesting to notice that if we encoded the whole period here as 1 and the whole period here as 0, it is equivalent to the elementary TRNG. So this is the second technique we use. It's called repetitive sampling. And this is a timing diagram. First, we enable the free running oscillator 1 a little bit while, and uh, we let it accumulate jitter. Then we enable the route later 2 to sample the signal. And the sample signal might not be with the edge. It can be all zeros, all ones, and we just keep sampling until there is the edge being captured. We note that we know there's dependency between each sample here, and this dependency is taken into account when we were developing the stochastic model. And talking about the stochastic model, uh, we need to have some, we need to measure some platform parameters for the stochastic model. For example, we measure the average period of the free running oscillators, we measure the delays for the delay chains, we measure the jitter strength, and we measure the duty cycle. And once we have all the platform parameters, we have to determine what's the design parameters. Here is the example. We use different jitter accumulation time for, uh, as input for our stochastic model. And as you can see that as increasing of the jitter accumulation time, the lower bound of the estimate entropy is also increased. And the goal of designing ESTRNG is to achieve the optimal throughput while maintaining a minimal entropy density at the output, which, is, which field, uh, fulfills the requirement of the AS31 standard, which is 0 0.997 per bit. And we go through all possible design parameters we can choose, like the jitter accumulation time and the stages of party filters we use as post-processing. And the optimal solu uh, solution is achieved as jitter accumulation time equal to 250 nanoseconds. And I want to note that all the entropy here is the entropy claimed by our stochastic model. And according to the experiment we did, um, the entropy estimated by the standard test is always larger than the entropy claimed by our stochastic model. This is the architecture how we implement our ESTRNG on Stellinx FPGA. We use lookup tables to implement the free running oscillators and edge detectors and also the Robit encoder. And we use a carry 4 as the type delay chain to sample the signal. And in total, we, we utilized five D flip flops, one carry 4, and the 10 lookup tables, which shows that our ESTRNG is indeed quite compact. And as a conclusion, our ESTRNJ has compact hardware implementation on both Xilinx and the Intel FPGA. It achieved a relative high throughput, which is around one megabit per, per second on both Xilinx and Intel FPGAs. 
and its security analysis is supported by a stochastic model. And I would like to invite all of you to check the details of our papers, because in the paper we will have the details of the stochastic model and also the comparison with other TRNGs as well. And uh, in the future, we will put more resources of the DCTRNG and ESTRNG in this link. Thank you very much for your attention, and if there's any questions, I would like to answer them. Questions? No questions? Okay, so maybe someone will come up with a question. In the meantime, I would like to ask a, a short question. So if you look at your construction for the TRNG, it's actually quite similar to a delay puff type of construction. So have you uh, looked at the relationship that these two, constru these two primitives have? And uh, do you think that some of the ideas that you have explored here could be transferred to that domain or vice versa? Yeah, thank you very much for that question. Actually, it is uh, true. I will show the slides where the delay path. So, um, so the delay chain of the IPJ, it may have some nonlinearities. And uh, actually, we proposed a delay chain based path, which was published as FPL last year. It's called Monte Carlo path, which utilizes the physical intrinsic delay of delay elements as a path materials. Mm -hmm. And uh, so indeed, like you said, the delay elements can be used both for TRNG and uh, for, for the path. But if we are using the delay as the uh, elements for the path, we are using delays to measure either the timing difference mm -hmm. or measuring the, the intrinsic delay of the delay elements. But, if, uh, but the way we use the delay elements in the DC TRNG or ES TRNG is that we are utilizing the minimal steps of the delay elements as a ruler to measure the signal, to measure the position of the signal. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Any more questions? No? Okay, let's uh, thank the speaker again. Thank you. And I think this ends uh, the first day of chess, 2018. And you're all welcome to the reception, which is following in about 15 minutes, I think. <laughs>